What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Treads Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson, and today is episode six of the Reverse Flow Smoker Build Series. Coming up! As you can see so far, this thing is coming along pretty nicely. A few little hiccups here and there, but nothing too detrimental. And it's looking pretty nice. And in today's episode, we are going to get this thing from looking like this into a fully functional smoker. We're going to get the end caps on. We're going to get the chimney and the collector put on. We're going to get that reverse flow baffle plate installed. But before we do any of that, we need to do my least favorite part of the entire smoker build. And that is drill a hole through some 3 8 inch thick steel for the grease trap. And the main reason I hate doing this is because you got to bust out out one of these. This is a super powerful drill. We call it the wrist breaker around here because it tends to jerk your arm <laughs> real bad and I'll forever have wrist problems because of this thing but you need something powerful to get through that thick of steel. Got one of these handy dandy little metal drill bits on there that has the spring inside which is great because as you're drilling the hole out there's going to be that little coin that's left over and it can get jammed in there real quick so the spring helps to make sure that doesn't happen. And when it comes to grease traps you can do whatever you want. You know you could put one on this end, you could put one on this end, you could put two, you could put one right in the middle but usually for me I like to put it right at this end and that's because this side of the firebox and the whole cook chamber is going to be the hottest and therefore where the grease is going to be at its most liquid state and it should uh, flow out nicely so not going to try too hard for exact placement just going to go probably about six inches in right in the middle and just hope for the best Ooh. yeah that's thick oh this is heavy oh So this is the baffle plate that makes this thing reverse flow smoker. It goes right above the exchange, but before I weld it in, I completely forgot to weld the underside of this tank. Remember in episode like two when I talked about doing that? So I'm gonna do that right now. And if you don't remember, it's because on the outside, I only welded it to about there because it's easier to weld it from the inside than the outside. So I'm gonna knock it out. Nice, that actually looks straight. Not even close. Nailed it. Uh, uh. So if you're unfamiliar with how the reverse flow works, it's pretty simple. You put your fire right there, smoke comes out through the exchange, and it runs underneath this plate all the way down, and then it'll come up through the end cap over here, and then circle right back across the grates and come out the smokestack, which will be mounted right there. Kind of a unique design. That's why I wanted to build this. I've never actually cooked on one before, but things seem to be looking pretty good. Although, I may have to cut a few inches off of this. Let's bust out the end cap and see how it looks. Now, as far as end caps go, typically on my smokers, I just do a nice flat end. But for this one, we really want it to be round for airflow purposes. And luckily, there's a metal shop here in Austin that sells propane tank end caps. You may have seen them before in my halfway built chud kettle never quite finished this thing but looks kind of cool it's really off balance that's why i haven't used it and i don't know it was just kind of a fun build for one day and i could drive up to north austin and get another one of these end caps but to be completely honest with you that's like a 30 to 45 minute trip both ways and i'm not really using this thing so i'm just gonna zip the top off of this and throw it on that and if i ever want to come back to this i'll just buy another one then feeling lazy I know I've said this probably like 900 times, but this thing is really starting to look like a pit. And yeah, that thing fits perfectly. I just shined it up a little bit to make it look nicer, but we got a nice clean seam. A little uneven on the end of the pipe here. Probably could have sanded that down to fill this gap a little bit better, but that is nothing that a little welding won't fix. And if we look on the inside here, this grate goes all the way back. Well, not all the way back, but at least to like right there. So that's why I haven't made this grate yet. <laughs> But as you can see, well, maybe not, because it's really dark. Yep, that's definitely hard to see, but there's a nice big gap back here for all the smoke to come up and over, over the grates and out the stack. Yeah. Oh, I gotta fill that hole in the end, too. The old cornhole. But I think right now I'm gonna finish welding this thing on, and then we'll throw the cap on the other side. Ooh, 
Would you just look at it, folks? I cleaned it up all nice and shiny. Plugged the butthole hole with just a bunch of weld and sanded it down. Probably not the best way to go about it, but looking nice. It's a good looking tank. And now it's time for this side. So when it comes to this end cap, I have opted for the very fancy way of going going about it. Got this beautiful piece cut out from the local fabricator, nice clean water jet cut, but this is not how I used to do it. What I used to do was just get a square piece that was the same width as a firebox, in this case 24 inches. I would put it right up against this, trace it out with the pencil, take the angle grinder to it and get the perfect alignment. And then of course you'd have to draw the exchange on there too to the perfect size. And that works really well. That's definitely the cheapest way to go about it, but that's a lot of work when you can just have someone print one out like this for you. So really it's up to you. If you're going to be going the water jet route and you design everything in CAD beforehand where you can get all these pieces printed like I did for this particular build, it's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of cutting. There's going to be less metal waste that you have to deal with, but again, it is a more expensive way to go about doing things. But that being said, I'm pretty glad that this is fitting nice and snug. There's a little bit of overlay, so we're going to have to do some grinding on this before we fully weld it. But uh, for now, I think it's time to just get this thing tacked on. So as you can see, the parts that were nice and flush, I welded and sanded down, looking absolutely beautiful, but like I mentioned, there's a bit of a lip. So that's what I'm doing now, is going ahead and sanding that down so we don't get a big bulbous weld on there. I already welded and sanded right here, and then that's right where you can see where I've already sanded it down. So I've got to do that hump, and this end cap will be on there. Beautiful. Looking nice and smooth and nice and shiny. Gotta love that. Next up, it's time to get the smokestack on there. And if you've seen any modern pit, there are basically two ways to go about doing this. You could go collector style, which is the old Aaron Franklin designed triangle box situation. Or you could go with the elbow, popularized by Moberg and Austin Smokeworks. This is my personal favorite because it's prefabricated. You just pick one of these up, throw it on, and you're good to go. Although they are kind of a pain in the butt to make sure they're nice and level and straight and plumb and all that good stuff. They're kind of pricey, and especially if you're going to go for a bigger one with a step down, costs can add up because these are real thick steel, schedule 40. And my general rule of thumb is is it depends on what you're putting it on. If I'm using an actual tank with a rounded end cap, I would definitely use one of these. But if you're doing a pipe style pit, I would definitely go collector. Because this is a pretty flat circle, if that makes sense, it's a shallow roundness as opposed to a hemispherical. That looks more like a pill. Throwing that on there would work great. Because of the end cap, there's a little more room for that smoke to collect. Whereas on a flat end, if you threw this little elbow on there, you'd end up with a whole bunch of back pressure right here. And what I mean by that is that in this case, the smoke is coming this way and it's gonna be nice convective heat, lots of airflow, and it's going to hit this dead stop, and it's just going to want to barrel and push back, which is going to create a hot spot right here. If it was a traditional flow, it would be this end, obviously. So by having a collector or a really big elbow that reduces down, you're essentially taking this hot spot and moving it back, which is why this triangle exchange works so well, because you've got all this airflow going to sit back here where you're not going to be putting your meat, as opposed to if we were just going to butt the stack up and have a super small hole, and the fact that this is just just as wide as the grates pretty much it means it's going to help improve airflow circulating it right in and out the stack. I have tried a bunch of different elbows and I've tried to come up with my own version of this but nothing works as well and this is the most simple way to go about it especially from a fabricating standpoint. Clearly I've got mine all bent up and cut out but I've made hundreds of these things with an angle grinder. You just put your pipe on two pieces of square and then figure out how wide it needs to be. Draw two lines, cut through both at the same time and then throw some sidewalls on there. And when it comes to building these the sidewall for me I always make as thick as the pipe itself. So simply enough, we've got this one piece and then we've got this piece to go on top and I'm super pumped that we got these cut with a water jet because cutting circles that perfectly with an angle grinder is very possible. I've done it many times, but it is a pain in the butt. So now all we need to do is get this lined up. And there we go. Time to weld this thing on.
Next up, let's talk about the smokestack itself. What I got here is a 43 inch schedule 10 pipe, six inches wide. And by schedule 10, I mean, it's the thinnest pipe I could find. You know, oftentimes the pipes you're gonna find that are six inches are schedule 40, which means they're super thick and it's just not necessary. It's gonna add extra weight to your pit. It's gonna be hard to move around, hard to cut through. It's not really gonna help with thermal mass or anything like that. So I recommend getting something nice and thin. Ow. My pit in the backyard is made with Schedule 40 and that whole pit is just way overbuilt because I didn't really know what I was doing at the time. But I picked this up at my local pipe supplier. That's right, I just Googled pipe suppliers in Austin. Went there, checked it out, and luckily they always have a scrap pile there because they deal in 40, 50 foot pipes for plumbers and electricians and whatever else you're gonna use this thick steel pipe for. And they always have a drop steel pile and more often than not, I can grab one of these for free, if not for very cheap, depending on who's working. Go to your places on a Friday like 4 p.m. because they just want to get out of there. They'll usually let you pick through the scrap pile for free. But like I said, this is a six inch pipe, as thin as I could find. And regarding pipe thickness, it really depends on the size of your pit. My general rule of thumb is anything 100 gallons or lower, I'm gonna use a four inch pipe. Anything from 100 gallons up to probably 500 gallons, I would use a six inch pipe. And then a 500 gallon or a thousand gallon or anywhere in between that, I would think about an eight or maybe even a 10 inch pipe as far as thickness of the smokestack goes. But again, and you can do whatever you want. You know, you could easily put a four inch on this. It might affect your draw a little bit, especially on a reverse flow, but I usually just kind of eyeball it. You know, six inch looks right on this for me and every 115 I've cooked on and built performs great. Now, regarding the height of your stack, that's a question I get asked all the time. And my answer is always really dumb. I just kind of eyeball that as well. You know, I've seen many smokers and I want it to look right aesthetically where it's not too short and it looks goofy and it's not too tall where it's just going to be unnecessary. But I'm also trying to envision if this folded down, it would come to right about halfway. I'm sure we could come up with a formula for that, but on a 115, I used to have 45 inches, but I thought it was just a little too tall. So now it's a 43 inch, six inch pipe. On my 65 gallon, that's a 20 inch by 48 inch cooking chamber. And that's got a four inch stack that's 36 inches tall. And again, if you were to fold it, it would come to just about halfway. And I've never had a problem with airflow on any of my pits. You know, it's right in the middle. It could be taller, it could be shorter and still function great. But at the end of the day, you could probably take this smokestack off entirely and I could still probably figure out how to cook on it. There's no real exact science to my measurements here, but through the years of trial and error, that's kind of what I've learned, at least for this size. So at this point, I've just got this pipe sitting inside the collector. I've got it held up with magnets, just trying to get it straight so I can draw the line of the piece that we need to remove. Because if we welded this in right now, there's no way for the air to enter in. So now that I've got it lined up, I'm gonna take this little pencil here and just draw this line there and down all the way around. And now we know exactly what piece to cut out. And there we have it folks with the collector done. I just finished that weld on that cap that I forgot that I needed to do. Pain in the butt because I had to get on my face and do it from the underside because you can't get to it on the inside because of that plate like I did this side over here. Huh? But that being done, this is now officially a fully functional smoker. Got this thing welded in, looking all nice, nice. Polished up a little bit, bust out the level, make sure this thing is nice and level and plumb on both axes. And yeah, I think we should fire this thing up not officially but just to see if it actually functions because I just I'm, I'm still skeptical about the whole reverse flow design anyway I need to see some smoke coming out of that stack Whew, but a pretty rewarding feeling gotta say it's a little awkward moving that thing I'm not used to not having a stack on the opposite side of the firebox but there she is in all her glory got this mini pro fired up got a rack of ribs cooking for dinner tonight they are done so I'm gonna borrow some coal
Well, fire's lit. Looking good. Burning nice and clean. That V fire box is doing its thing. And this is always the best part of a smoker build when you can actually prove that it smokes. Pretty sweet. Wish I had a thermometer on there. But again, this is just so we can end this video on a good note. Love it. Let's check out the inside. Yep, smoke is flowing. Loving these double doors too. Way less heavy than the typical 115. But there she is, smoking away in all her glory. Smoke away. Ah, beautiful. All right, y'all, that is gonna do it for this episode of the Offset Reverse Flow Build Series. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I gotta say, I am very pumped to have this thing fully functional. You know, at this point, we could totally fire it up and throw some meat on there. But there's still a few more things we gotta do. So be sure to tune in next week when we do all the finishing touches, like the smoker stack damper, thermometers, grease tray, water pan, just general cleanup and polishing. And then all we gotta do is season this thing up, throw on some meat and see how it cooks. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you got a pit build going yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I love to see what y'all are building. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.